Do y'all remember Symphony? Back when I was a young warthog, Nickelodeon was one of my favorite channels to watch in secret. Yes, I said secret because my mom was kind of iffy about Spongebob. I was raised Christian Baptist. I feel like I should tell you enough. But nonetheless, I got traumatized by the hash slinging slasher like everyone else. So I probably should have listened. As I was saying, Nick was one of my favorite channels, especially Nick at Night and Teen Nick. But Disney Channel ran my life, so I would only go over to Nickelodeon to clean my palette sometimes. But when I did, I'd watch the classics. Spongebob, True Jackson VP, Drake and Jaws, Zoe 101, and my personal fave, Big Time Rush. But one day, when I was nose deep into my third bowl of Fruit Loops, a promo for a new show titled How to Rock appeared. And that's when I saw her, Symphonique Miller. Now, for those unfamiliar, Symphonic Miller is a multi-talented superstar. Yes, I said superstar. With her talents in singing, songwriting, dancing, and acting, she also makes time to play the motherfucking piano and guitar. I mean, like I said, superstar. She's a Leo born August 1st, 1996 to Master P, the CEO and founder of No Limit Records, and the younger sister to rapper and actor Romeo Miller, whom also had his own show on Nickelodeon as well, might I add. With the Symphonique's family status, one would assume this would be an easier way in, aka nepotism at its finest. Truth be told, I don't mind nepotism as long as talent and skills come with it though, but on a serious note, Symphonique made it clear that she preferred getting opportunities on her own without the connection to her father. Stating in an interview with Teen Vogue August 2012, I wanted to pay my dues because I didn't want to gain anything from just being related to someone. I wanted to go out there and work for it. Before Symphonique was able to start pursuing entertainment, her dad told her he wouldn't take her seriously unless she got straight A's. She stated in Vogue August 2013, he wasn't so stoked about the entertainment part because I'm his little girl, and he knows how crazy the business can be. But he made an ultimatum with me. He said if I get all A's, then I could pursue entertainment. In my family, we put education first, and we love a determined and educated queen. So at 13, Symphonique, with the approval from her father, started releasing music with her friends Alexia, Kylie, and Shelby on YouTube. And the four of them performed under the moniker Fabulous Girls and released some fabulous bops, bitch. I'm sure y'all remember the anthem, Lil Miss Swagger, and let's not forget Butterflies. These songs went number one in my house, especially because I was a cheerleader at the time, so I was Lil Miss Swagger for real, you feel me? But this put Symphonique on my radar for the rest of my childhood after that. Like I said earlier, Disney Channel ran my life around this time, so I wasn't really tuned into what the Fabulous Girls had going on. Rather, I was turned in to Shake It Up and Ant Farm at this time, which meant I was tuned in to China and McLean's bomb ass soundtrack for the show and was trying to learn the new eight counts a day I had for the week. Plus, Radio Disney was going crazy back then, so I wasn't really paying attention to the Fabulous Girls, like I said. Though, through my research, I found that Symphonique and the Fabulous Girls ended up releasing an EP titled, guess what, Fabulous Girl, under Hollywood Dream Music in 2010, doing performances under the label's YouTube as well as music videos. Along with her active participation in the Fabulous Girls, Symphonique was active in the industry as well, having had small acting roles throughout her career before playing lead on her own sitcom. Symphonique was cast in shows such as Just Jordan, another short-lived sitcom on Nick with the black lead, as Carla, Kid Judge Foxtree in the movie Opposite Day. She had a cameo in a Cat Williams film titled Internet Dating. She voiced Holly in the show Phineas and Ferb. Guest starred as Bernie on True Jackson VP, another short-lived sitcom on Nick with the black lead. Sheila Hamner on Nickelodeon's The Truth voiced the character Nova in the Wings Club, and even starred as Kat in the iconic Big Time Girl Group episode of Big Time Rush. And she even got nominated for a BET Award at 14 for Best Female Hip Hop Artist in 2011. All this before being casted in her lead role as Casey Simon on How to Rock. My good sis was booked and busy, okay? No limit shit for real, bitch. Now, Symphonique had already been working with Nick on a talent development deal since 2009. I mean, didn't y'all hear me say she was a superstar? They knew they had some. But it wasn't until 2012 that her talents would be shown worldwide for kids and adults alike to see. How to Rock premiered February 4th, 2012. Side note, I knew y'all were counting the days till the world ended. Oh God, I thought it was gonna end New Year's Day. I legit hid in the closet and I blame Ronald Emmerich. You will pay for your crimes to my mental health. 
Anyways, How to Rock premiered February 4, 2012, garnering 3.3 million views on its first episode. For a first episode that's huge, especially compared to other musical shows such as Big Time Rush and Victorious, which pulled in 5.7 and 3.7 million views on their first episodes. How to Rock's theme song, Only You Can Be You, was sung by Symphonique, bringing attention to not only the musical aspects of the show, but showcased Symphonique's musical talents for those that were unaware. A little fun fact that I found throughout my research, a book distribution company that is known for some pretty popular series such as Pretty Little Liars and The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants also has a pretty well-rounded television history with their hands in the production of franchises such as The Vampire Diaries, The Originals, and The 100, just to name a few. But How to Rock was the first sitcom they produced and is based on a book created by the company that was titled How to Rock Braces and Glasses, which is conveniently the title of the first episode of the series. Just thought this was something that y'all would like to know. No? Okay. Anyways, How to Rock received pretty high viewership, being popular for children ages 6 to 14 during its airing, even having notable episodes identified by fans. Now for those that care, courtesy of Episode Ninja, the first part of the two-part episode, How to Rock CeeLo, was voted number one. How to Rock Christmas came in at number two. And side note, are you really a sitcom if you don't have a good Christmas episode? <laughs> Back to the show. How to Rock a Prank was ranked number three. How to Rock a New Cast, number four. How to Rock a Lunch Table, number five. The second part to the two-part episode, How to Rock CeeLo, ranked number six. How to Rock a Birthday Party, number seven. How to Rock a Secret Agent, number eight. How to Rock a Statue, number nine, and How to Rock Camping, ranked at number 10. How to Rock ran from February 4th, 2012 to December 8th, 2012, meaning it ended up in the short-lived Black-led sitcoms on Nickelodeon Cemetery. Sadly, only leaving me with the talented token Black on Victorious until they canceled that too. But aside, I made it work. Shout out the great Leon Thomas III. Now, just because How to Rock stopped didn't mean Symphony had to. Symphony seems to have a great working relationship with Nickelodeon before and after How to Rock. If y'all remember, I mentioned she starred in Just Jordan, True Jackson VP, and even voiced Nova on Wings Club for eight episodes. Side note, <clears throat> voice acting is one of my aspirations aside from writing and directing, hence me producing video essays on YouTube. All right, back to the show. <clears throat> Wings Club was Symphonique's last time working with Nickelodeon, at least based on her IMBD results, and she slowly started to ascend into more mature roles after the fact. Symphonique starred as Tina Dempsey in one of my favorite TV movies, The Dempsey Sisters, alongside with another IT girl from the 2000s, T.M. Marie and Denise Lawton. If you're a fan of movie musicals, you should definitely check it out. This movie really showcased Symphonique's acting talents as well as her singing abilities. I love her voice, but I really enjoy her acting, and I need to see her more on my screen in these lovely 2020s. Y'all ain't doing it, so I for sure am. Hence, this video. Symphonique also starred in the sequel to her father's classic film, I Got the Hookup, I Got the Hookup 2, in 2019 as Trish, and her most recent role was as Gabriella in the BET movie Never and Again in 2021. Since these films, Symphonique hasn't really been present on my big screen outside of these instances, but that hasn't kept her from still being active on my smaller one. Symphony continued to pursue her career in music, making it clear that it was her passion. Shortly after leaving Nickelodeon, Symphony reconnected with members from her old girl group, The Fabulous Girls, Alexia and Kylie. The three of them began to release songs on YouTube such as You Do, which gives major 2010s vibes, and covers the songs such as Whatever You Want by Tony Tone Tone and All My Life by Casey and Jojo. They also made a consistent effort to upload their dance rehearsals as a way of displaying their talents and choreography. Aside from nostalgic uploads between her and her previous group members, Symphony continued putting out cover videos and her own solo music on YouTube such as Talk To Me and Turn Up Time in 2012 and Nobody Like You in 2013 featuring an it boy of the 2010s and Symphonique's alleged ex, Jacob Lattimore. His own video coming soon. Symphonique released her album No Days Off in 2018 that is home to hits like Since Jordan and Can't Wait. More recently, she released a bounce remix to Tevin Campbell's Can We Talk in March 2023 and her own solo single, Pressure, in November 2023. And even performed the Can We Talk remix on the No Limit Tour and at the Lovers and Friends Festival in Las Vegas of May 2023. She was even spotted at the Staples Center singing the national anthem for the Lakers in January of this year. 
Symphonique is still active, but is very low key nowadays. She'll post every blue moon on Twitter or Instagram, but it'll mainly revolve around her career. She's extremely focused on her music, announcing in October 2023 that she is the CEO of her own label called Pressure Records. She aims to be an inspiration and representation for Black people and women in the industry to own our art and build generational wealth. She posts behind the scenes clips of sound checks and music videos from time to time, but lays low doing what real G's do, and that's moving in silence, okay? <laughs> But seriously, it's nice to see a child star just living life, especially because we know this industry is such a trying place. And I'm happy to say somebody who inspired me as a creative when I was younger hasn't disappointed me as I've gotten older. Now I'll wrap this all up to say, personally, I love Symphony, hence this video. And I hate that she isn't on our screens as much anymore. I follow her so I keep up with the new music and performances she does every now and again, but I honestly feel she had the same potential as a Kiki Palmer when it comes to entertainment. Now, I understand the industry isn't the kindest, especially to its creatives. So I would completely understand if Symphony decided what's most comfortable for her is being rid of the industry pressure and becoming the pressure herself. <laughs> you see what I did there because of her song and her label? <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm happy I was able to experience a childhood with someone like Symphony on my screen. Talents like her, Kiki, Zendaya, China Ann McLean, and Raven Simone alike inspire me as a creative, and I feel compelled to always showcase my appreciation when I can. Symphonique is an incomparable creative whose artistic abilities are endless. She assured everyone that she would pay her dues and make a name for herself in this industry without the connections to her father. Showing young women like myself at an early age that we can accomplish anything and our potential is limitless. Singer, songwriter, actress, pianist, guitarist, dancer, and now record label exec. I mean, limitless. No limit shit for real, bitch. <laughs> I hope I get to work with her one day, especially because I know the perfect role too. She still releases music under the moniker Neek, so y'all go stream her new single, Pressure, and let's support the timeless talent and it girl, Symphonique Miller. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. It was really fun to make. So please comment below and let me know how you felt. Did Symphony have an impact on y'all's childhood like she did mine? Did you hate when they canceled How to Rock? Who else would y'all like me to highlight as a timeless talent to our childhood? Comment down below and I'll get right back to you. Mwah! Like and subscribe.